of a sudden accident, operation, and then the death of uh, one of our previous pastors, Pastor Bart Palmberg. And uh, I'm going to say a few words about Bud, who had a huge influence on this church way back. And after I finish speaking, I'll open up to anybody in the congregation who wants also to say a few words about something that sticks with them from Bud's time, maybe something that's humorous, maybe something that a good memory, something special that happened to them. You're welcome to, to say what you wish on that. Um, I hope you can see the pictures. It's difficult with this light here. Perhaps we can knock off all the lights inside the building and then that will make it a little bit easier. So you're probably aware that our pastor Bud Palmberg, previous pastor, died on Wednesday following a fall in Bali, Indonesia, where he was working as an interim pastor at the Kuta International Christian Church. Bud would have been 84 next month, but he was still working for his Lord and was excited to be able to return to Bali for the second time. He had served as an interim pastor some years before that. We heard the news last Tuesday evening, the 21st of May, that Bud had fallen and hit his head very hard and was unconscious and being operated on in a hospital in Bali. In the morning, we woke up to the news that he had not survived that, that operation and had gone to be with his Lord, whom he had served so faithfully and enthusiastically for many years. Bud was born in Nebraska in 1935 and was married to Donna, his wife, for over 60 years. Together, they may, if you knew them, they made an amazing team. Before coming to serve at ICL, Bud was pastor of the Mercer Island Covenant Church in Seattle for 26 years. When, when he arrived there, the congregation averaged around 50 people. Under his leadership, the church grew to over 1,000, with Bud becoming senior pastor of, of a team of five pastors. In the first year that he arrived in Mercer Island in 1967, Bud launched Operation Nightwatch, which reached out to those with problems of alcohol or drug or other such things who frequented the downtown bars and clubs of the port area of Seattle, the area which is nicknamed Skid Row today. Bud felt the need to offer these people care and help or maybe just to buy them a hamburger and be there for them to say that somebody cares for them and to help them in their problems. Despite several injuries, including being stabbed, he did this work at nights throughout his time in Mercer Island. He built up a team from those early days and after 25 years, he was still doing this task, but he was the only one of the original team of pastors that was still continuing with that work. There was still a team there, and there's still a team there today doing that work. The work he started there spread throughout the U.S. and then to many other countries, including the U.K. Today, we would probably call these people street pastors. Uh, certainly in the U.K., they're called street pastors. But this is what the work he started. And Donna once said to me, she never knew whether he would walk in the door at night or that she would have a call from the hospital. In 1993, Bud and Donna left Seattle to become the pastor of ICL, where, where Bud was pastor for the next seven years until he, in inverted commas, retired back to Mercer Island and the Covenant Shores Retirement Home for Pastors of the Covenant Church. However, he never really retired. Jill and I arrived at ICL on Bud's third Sunday as pastor here. I remember the day very clearly. Years later, Bud told me that he and Donna had been praying for, for new people to come to ICL. On that Sunday we arrived, there were about 30 people in the worship service. And on that day, also on their first day, as well as Jill and I, were Melissa and Andre Lowe, who are currently now temporarily in Australia, and also Urs and Karen Truniger, who today are the owners of Melissa's Kitchen, just across the road from Suter's here in Lucerne. At that time, ICL shared the building with the Smith Methodists, and we were not financially strong enough to support the Palmbergs completely. 
and they used their own capital in the early days to fully support themselves. Donna started a ladies' group on Wednesday evenings called Ladies' Night Out, of which Jill was a member. And I would spend the evening, waiting for her to, to drive her back home, I would spend the evening with Bud at their apartment in Ebicon. Through those evenings, I got to know Bud very well. And he became not just a pastor to me, but a very dear friend who I learned so much from. And when he and Donna left in 2000, ICL had grown to a regular Sunday morning attendance of 120 and had become a church which was self-supporting. Bud never retired. He was back here again a few years later as interim pastor for five months. When Pastor Brian Post resigned suddenly, I approached Bud about being an interim and knowing how busy they were in retirement said, could you come in maybe two months time? Think and pray about it. He replied, in less than a minute. We have, and we can be ready in two weeks. And he came in two weeks. During that time, he and also then after him, Pastor Randy Klassen were here as interim pastors. The church also grew again. And Bud and Donna came back once again for ICL's 30th anniversary, where Bud said that he wasn't going to say goodbye again, as he'd already said it about five times to ICL, and they didn't want to say it anymore. Over the years, Bud has impacted so many, many people's lives and brought many to the Lord. And now his Lord has called him home, and I'm sure with the words, well done, true and faithful servant. Bud is survived by Donna, their children Jeff and Chrissy, seven grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Thank you. Anybody want to say anything about Bud? Anybody else at all? I just, I just have to say a little something about Bud, which I've, I've written down. Um, Pastor Bud ended his life as he lived it in service. I consider him to be one of the best examples of a splendid service servant of the Lord. He was an excellent exposition person of the scripture and the gospel, never hesitating for one moment to spread the good news about salvation. Sorry, I've got a headache. I can't read properly. I've got my eyes have gone all flickery, so if I say the wrong words, you have to guess. He was a counselor, a storyteller, he used history and psychology appropriately, and his big heart led his flock always to a closer walk with the Lord. We are sad, and yet we rejoice in his, that he is with God, where he will surely receive due honor. He will be remembered here in Lucerne for his many personal touches, his baritone singing voice, which he was never afraid to use, his humorous weddings, his photo shoot baptisms, and mostly, most of all, the toupee that he wore, which he often took off. <laughs> he said he had two, personal, two appearances, but only one true soul. His memory is to many of us here a blessing. I, can, I remember three things with Bud. Number one, the toupee. We two were on the church, the search committee, and from the first moment, his application kind of you know, went to the top. He was very interesting, very committed, sounded fantastic. And right off the bat, Denise said, that's a toupee. And I said, Denise, no. Well, Denise and I met him when they first showed up in Lucerne. And here he came with the top down, as he used to call it, instead of the top up. So she was going, told you, told you, told you. <laughs> Something else that I will never forget about Bud is the going along with the street ministry. He was extremely versatile. He was good for this church in that he could be, be everything to everybody in the manner of Paul. He would do anything to be able to witness to people. For example, one evening he might be with the Galways in the Kaka El at a, a lovely concert. And the next evening, he was down on the Baselstrasse witnessing to the prostitutes. If they spoke English, he would speak to them. 
what was the third thing? Ah, I'll never forget. He was the first minister that coined the phrase, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Just while you're doing that, just talking about the toupee before Joe speaks. He, he was talking to the children at the front here one Sunday morning. And as part of the message, he decided he had to take the toupee off to, to demonstrate something. At least three children burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, about all the others were just, like, <laughs> could not believe they were just frozen. They're like, that. It was unbelievable. <laughs> They'd never seen anybody take their head off, like the top of their head off. <laughs> uh, and um, there was something else that, I'll let Jill speak, there was something up there now. I'll say something after that. Well, um, as it's been said, that Donna and Bud were a team. They were in partnership all the time, not only in their marriage, but in their service to God. And um, quite recently, they decided to go on a cruise. They hadn't been on a, a cruise, and they wanted to go, um, uh, you know, ju just really because it, it, they, they had been working hard. And um, Donna actually had an accident, and she fell between um, getting on, onto the boat and, and, and on the um, quay. quay. And uh, 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 so their holiday was really with, with Donna going to the hospital and then in a wheelchair. And... Um, he, he told. He said to us, laughingly, he says, um, "This is the this is the first time I've been able to push her around." <laughs> and we thought that that was their kind of humour. It was never meant to be cruel. It was it was fun and it was well-meaning. But he he lightened things. And the other thing I I remember is that um, when we uh, when we first knew him, he kept on calling me kiddo, and I said. You know, I've been called a lot of things, but not kiddo. Um, and he said, he said, well, to me, you are a kid. And I said, really? And he says, uh, but, but one day he said, you'll probably reach my age. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, it's rather nice. He kept me young. And I, I thought, well, that's nice. Because he always had that rapport with people. And it's so important because you're, you're meeting different kinds of people. And he, he knew the people who would take things, you know, um, personally. So he'd be much more sensitive. But he also knew those who would, who'd got the same kind of humour as he got. And, 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 and I had that kind of humour. So I appreciated him very much. Um, and I'll miss him. But he, he's actually um, in... He's in a place which he always wanted to go to. That is his home, and it is our home, if you believe in God, um, which we do. Um, and although it is a, I mean, it is a separation, but we've got the hope that we will meet together with our loved ones and those who, um, who love God around the throne with him. Just one more thing that just come to my, came to my mind. One time I met Bud for, um, I don't know why, but for a coffee or something. But he was wearing something I'd never seen him wear before, but wearing a dog collar, a white dog collar, which was unusual for Bud. And I said, why, why are you wearing a, the white collar by the dog collar? And he said, you'd be amazed how many doors that collar opens in hospitals, prisons, police stations, uh, government buildings. You can get into anywhere, and uh, just by wearing that, because they just oh, come in, <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't afraid to use it. But a, a wonderful person and an amazing witness for his Lord. Um, let, let's just say a short prayer for for Bud and the family. Father, I just want to thank you for your servant Bud Palmberg. Lord, what an amazing ministry he had. Lord, how many people, only you know how many people he reached and brought to you. How many problems he helped to solve. How many lives he touched. How many people he influenced. Lord, I just thank you that I, we had the chance to know him. 
and be one of those people that were influenced by him or touched by him. And Lord, now he's home with you, as, as Joel said, where he wants to be. Thank you for everything, for his talents, for his gifts, for everything that he gave, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray for Donna, who is still in Bali at the moment and hoping to return home this week. And Lord, we just heard the news that the, the volcano in Bali is erupting and that some flights have been cancelled. And we, Lord, we pray that you will overcome in these, ish, these problems like this, Lord, and help Donna to travel safely back to her family and her home in Seattle. And Lord, be with her family, the children and the grandchildren, the great children, great grandchildren at this time, um, as they must be struggling to cope and understand what has happened. It happened so suddenly. And Lord, just once again, thank you for this, this wonderful ministry that Bud had through Jesus Christ. Amen.